Welcome to this session. Uh, today we're going to have a debate on a systematic review just published in BJS. And uh, it's about uh, meta-analysis on uh, negative pressure wound therapy for closed surgical incisions. My name is Christina Winter and I'm a registrar and postdoc in the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics in Odense University Hospital, Denmark. And with me today, I have the first author of this paper, and it's Nana Hyldig, who is a PhD student. And uh, with us, we have Henne Birke Sørensen, who is a consultant in plastic and reconstructive surgery. Welcome. So, Nana, could you tell me, what is your paper about? Yes, as you, as you said, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis, where we investigated the effect of negative pressure wound therapy on closed surgical incisions. Negative pressure wound therapy is a well-known treatment for open wounds, and in recent years it has been extended to uh, closed surgical incisions as well. And there has uh, now there's now uh, some negative pressure wound therapy dressings that can be used directly on closed surgical incisions, which are available uh, commercial, commercial available. So we wanted to. Uh, to uh, investigate this uh, new prophylactic approach for post-surgical wound complications. And we only included randomized controlled trials that compared negative pressure wound therapy with a standard post-operative dressing. Our main uh, focus was wound complications such as wound infection, wound dehiscence and number of seromas. So is this an important topic right now? It's important because uh, each year uh, many new inventions are presented in uh, healthcare and as health workers uh, we have an obligation to do our best uh, to ensure that it is the right inventions uh, we spend our money and our time on when we are treating our patients. So it is treasured when scientists like Nana uh, uh, is uh, taking the time and the effort to make uh, a meta-analysis like this one, uh, pooling all available valid data and uh, treating them according to the highest standard and then afterwards uh, she's able to give conclusions and recommendations. Based on a literature search, we included seven published and three unpublished randomized controlled trials. Regarding the unpublished randomized controlled trials, we contacted the authors who kindly gave us enough information so we were able to include the results in our meta-analysis. How did you get information about these unpublished studies? We uh, contacted manufacturers and uh, looked at the webpage clinical trials, so that was basically how we found them. Can you tell me something about the results of your new paper? There were seven studies who investigated the endpoint wound infection. Four studies looked at wound dehiscence, and in three studies, the primary outcome was number of seroma. And when we looked at the 10 studies, we found that there was some clinical heterogeneity uh, as they investigated um, the effect on different types of surgical, uh, surgical procedures. For example, uh, in one study, the study population was a uh, patient with who had breast reduction, and another study looked at hip and knee replacement. Also, there was um, the, the studies used different kind of negative pressure wound therapy devices, and the treatment uh, varied from two to seven days uh, in the intervention group. And when we looked at follow-up, there was a variation between 10 days and up to one year post-surgery. Furthermore, the studies were generally incompletely reported. That means that the papers were, were of moderate uh, methodological quality. So what results did you find? As you can see on the first plot, some studies investigated the effect uh, on overall wound infection, whereas two studies only looked at deep wound infection. However, these two studies uh, was based on a small number of incidents and therefore there was a weak statistical power. So when we pulled the individual studies in the meta-analysis, we found that negative pressure wound therapy 
reduces the risk of wound infection with almost 50%. The number needed to treat to avoid one wound infection was 25 patients. However, the risk of developing a wound infection depends on both patient risk factors as well as the type of surgery. So when interpreting the, risk, the number needed to treat, it's important to take both the, the absolute number of patients as well as the clinical importance into consideration. When we look at the forest plots for wound dehiscence, we can see that three studies find that a negative pressure reduces the risk of uh, dehiscence, whereas it seems that in one study, the negative pressure wound therapy increases the risk of dehiscence. And when we pooled the, three, uh, the four studies together in the meta-analysis, we didn't find a statistic significant different in the two treatments. The next two false plots are regarding seroma formation. The strength of the three studies who looked at seroma formation as their primary outcome is that they are performed by the same research group, which uh, means that there are minimal uh, clinical heterogeneity. However, the studies are very small, with only about 20 patients in each, each study, and they were only followed for 10 days. So when we pulled the individual results uh, of the three studies, we found that negative pressure wound therapy reduces the risk of seroma uh, and decreases the volume of, of a, a seroma measured by ultrasound at day five. Mm -hmm. And the number needed to treat to avoid one uh, seroma was uh, three. So how does negative pressure wound therapy work on closed incisions? Here we see well, some of what we know uh, regarding uh, mode of action uh, of negative pressure wound therapy. If we focus on the re reduced risk of complications in closed incisions, the most important mode of actions are probably the macro deformation, the increased uh, perfusion, the increased lymph drainage, the stabilization and the removal of the liquid uh, from the surface, the skin next to the incision. But still, can you tell me how this works? There is a discussion uh, concerning that, and uh, there are several possibilities, and it might be a combination of several. Is it the biomechanical properties uh, triggering uh, a shift in the profile of soluble modulators? Or is it the difference in pressure in the tissue which is upgrading uh, the capability of the, of the tissue? Or maybe specifically, or maybe more specific, the uh, difference in pressure of oxygen? Or is it the deformation of the tissue and uh, the cells that play a key role, or maybe some reason we so far haven't even considered. Going back to your studies, Nana, it seems that there is a clinical effect that we should consider. How would, which conclusions have you done based on your analysis? Yes, our conclusion is that when we pool the results of the inter individual studies, uh, it seems that negative pressure wound therapy reduces the risk of wound infection and number of seroma. However, when interpreting the results, we, it's very important that we take into consideration both the clinical and the methodological heterogeneity. And as Hanne mentioned, it is important to look at patient risk factors and type of uh, surgical procedure when we want to introduce this new way of uh, prophylactic treatment um, in, in our daily uh, work. Yes, could you give an example of this? Well, uh, if you look at cesarean section, the main uh, outcome of interest would be wound infection, whereas in uh, breast reduction, the main outcome might be uh, wound dehiscence. 
So based on your experience performing this meta-analysis, what would you recommend in, in future studies? Well, I think that in future randomized controlled trials, it's important that they are well designed and reported. Um, and I think it's important that we uh, have focus on the definition of uh, uh, outcome parameters and the exact uh, time of follow-up. And would you comment on that, Hannah? We must admit that uh, uh, in the field of clinical trials, uh, at the moment, reviews are uh, outnumbering original papers. So uh, high-level clinical uh, trials will certainly increase our knowledge uh, and thereby making the daily decisions uh, easier for surgeons. Furthermore, it would uh, be welcomed uh, if the economical aspect uh, was included in those studies. And uh, Nana, I know you have some ongoing studies right now. Could you tell us about these? Yes, in uh, our research group, we are conducting a randomized controlled trial of a high-risk group of uh, women who give birth by cesarean section. And uh, we are looking at women with a BMI above 30. And the women, half of the women are treated with a negative pressure wound therapy dressing for approximately five days. And in the control group, the women are treated with a standard post-operative dressing for 24 hours. Yeah. Okay, and how far are you with these um, inclusions? We have uh, included patients for two and a half years, and we have uh, almost 600 uh, patients in the trial. And hopefully we will be able to end the study within a couple of months. So. Uh, Right now, this study is the first study, uh, first randomized controlled trial of uh, negative pressure wound therapy for cesarean section. And with the 600 participants, it's uh, so far the largest study. So, wow. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution with this meta-analysis. Hopefully, the results will be helpful for surgeons and patients in clinical uh, settings. And we're looking forward to the results of your new clinical trial. Uh, so thank you both for coming and thank you everyone for listening.